Huh? Look, we see now. It didn't match up now. Yeah, we see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll just clean it up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? All right. You can open it. You can go forward. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. You know that God has smiled on me. He's been to you, Lord, in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Thanking you, Lord, for smiling on us, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for being so grateful and mindful about us, Lord Jesus. You can think about anything else and be everywhere else, but you choose to be with us, Lord Jesus. You choose to dwell with us, Lord. You chose us, Lord, from the foundation of the world, Lord, and we ask that you don't let us take it for granted, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to be aware, Lord, of what is going on today and that you are at the door, Lord. You're already, already almost in the door, Lord Jesus. There's so many things going on, Lord, but we are not afraid and we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord. Hallelujah, for it is the gospel of salvation, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord, to spread your gospel, Lord, to go out and get your people, Lord, so nobody is left behind, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for being so mighty in our lives, Lord. Thank you for your sacrifice and teaching us about and reminding us about what you did for us when you died for us, Lord. You didn't have to do that. You gave us a refreshing, a, a blood transfusion. 
Hallelujah, this past weekend, Lord, and we want to hold on to that. We don't want to forget, Lord. We get so caught up in our daily lives, Lord, and we forget about you, Lord, and we don't we do not do you right, Lord. So we're sorry, Lord Jesus, and we just ask that you continue to keep smiling on us, Lord, because we don't deserve it, but we are grateful, Lord Jesus, that you don't never give up on us, Lord. Bless our pastor on today as he comes forth to bring your blessed word, Lord Jesus. We don't want to take you for granted, Lord. We love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise ye the Lord. God is good, isn't he? Yes. Every day of the week. Every moment of the day. The book of Acts, chapter 9. Remember, we ended up talking last week about not being afraid. Stop being afraid. Remove your fear. Amen? Remove your fear. Remove your fear. Remove your fear. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to talk about that some more tonight. Your fear. Your fear. Stop being afraid. I told y'all, when, when you're afraid of small things, it makes you afraid of big things. Always know any type of action, any type of thought, pattern, or behavior that you have, it never started out small. It started, I mean large, it started out small, and it grew. And a lot of times, that's why you can't explain your behavior. You can't explain your behavior because you don't remember where it started because it was just a small thing. And then one day it was big, and all of a sudden you know that's the way you were, but you don't really remember how it got started. You know, I, I, I thank the Lord that uh, um, he lets me know, and, and he can do it for you all. He let me know where all of my problems started. They was always small, and they grew, and they grew. That's why I know I'm right about being afraid. When you're afraid of a bug, it'll make you afraid of everything. Amen? Uh, never allow yourself to be afraid anymore. Don't allow yourself to be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid of pain. You know, I, I feel I can take pretty much any kind of emotional pain. I feel I can take it. I don't think there is a emotional pain I can't take. Amen? Because I figure I, I, done, I done went through the, the, the small one, and so I mean the large one, so everything else is small. Everything else is easy, piece of cake. Amen? And, 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 and it'll help you not to be afraid to be a witness for Jesus Christ. It, 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 it'll make you strong for Jesus. You won't be afraid of, of people not liking you or, or having problems, and it, it just it just won't bother you. It it bother you. It'll bother you emotionally because you know humans just don't know what they're doing sometimes, you know. But it won't bother you where it affect your lifestyle. Remember, I said whoever, whatever, control your emotions, controls you. Amen. So let's let's let God do that. Now, we were talking about Paul, how Paul, Saul, because we haven't, haven't changed his name yet, how Saul was caught in havoc, and then all of a sudden he gets saved, everybody was afraid of him, and the Bible says when he got saved, let's go to verse 31 of chapter 9. When Paul started preaching the gospel, when Paul started preaching the gospel, people stopped being afraid. Amen. When Paul started preaching the gospel, people stopped being afraid. Amen. Is, is Aaron sick? That's why she laying down in it? Okay. Huh? Nah, you can let her lay in there. I pray for her after church. She'll be fine. We got two ministers in our house. Y'all didn't pray for her? Effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Y'all missed the joke. Come on, y'all. It's okay to be serious, but it's also good to be ready to smile and laugh, too. All right, verse 31 said what? Then said, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walked in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. In other words, they stopped being afraid of man and started being afraid of the right person, which is God, Jesus Christ. We are not afraid of the right person, y'all. That's our problem. We need to be afraid of God and not, and not man. Come on, verse 32. And it came to pass 
as Peter passed through all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydia. And there he found a certain man named Ananias, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Ananias, Jesus Christ, make it thee whole, arise, and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt in Lydia and Sharon saw him and turned. When we can get people to turn to God that's really had a rough time in their life, we're always going to get a lot of other people. But you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. I know it takes a lot of faith to walk up to somebody and say, I'm going to pray and you're going to be healed. It takes a lot of faith. Most people require uh, uh, previous proof that it can be done before they're willing to do it. Amen. We have to get to the, the, the mindset. The only way you're going to get proof it can be done is start doing it. Am I making sense? If you've never done it, you'll never do it until you do it. So you can say, now I can do it. What am I saying? Don't be afraid to pray that you can heal people. Don't be afraid that you can pray and raise folks up from being sick. Don't be afraid. Because you don't know when God is going to do it. But if you always say, I ain't got that kind of power. You're never going to pray the prayer. Amen? You're never going to, you're never going to pray the prayer. I personally haven't raised nobody from the dead, but I believe I can do it. One day it's going to happen. I don't believe I can, I mean, I've never done and raised nobody from being sick and snap, they, it can be done. All I got to do is do it in faith and belief that God is going to do it because John can't do it. Are y'all with me? John can't do it. You can't do it. And see, and that's why our faith don't get strong as fast as it should because we say, I ain't never done that. You ain't going to never do it. You ain't going to never raise nobody from the dead. You ain't going to never pray for somebody and they be healed. Jesus is going to be the one to do it. So here's the, the key to, the, to, to this prayer. Do you believe Jesus can do it? Do you believe Jesus can do it? But as long as you think you are going to do it, you're never going to have any proof. You're never going to have any proof. Everything we do has to be faith in Jesus Christ. When you take the faith out of Jesus Christ, you're never going to do nothing. Amen? Come on, verse 36. Now, uh, uh, let me say this again, that, come, that, is, a, uh, that is a type of fear. Because you are afraid to pray the prayer because you think you can't do it. Well, you can't, number one, so you're right about that, so you ought to be afraid. But stop thinking that Jesus can't do it. Jesus can do it. But it's based on your faith. Your faith. Remember, look how he walked up to the man. He said what? Peter, verse 34, he said, Peter, come on, 34, and Peter said, Ananias, who make it thee whole? Not Peter. That's why you get all these people, ah, come on, ah. See, that's why ain't nothing happening. Because you think it's you. You are the physical person, but you are not the person that's dispersing the power to make it happen. So stop, stop, let's not, let's not get in a practice of acting like we can do things. We, let's make it known that I don't know nothing. That's why I boast all the time, I'm perfect. Why am I perfect? Because I know the perfect one. All I gotta do is call on the perfect one. I know John can't do nothing. I know that, but Jesus can do everything. So, oh, hallelujah. As long as I walk around calling on Jesus, I know things are going to happen. I know God would not have me doing what I'm doing and preaching the way I'm preaching if he didn't have something up his sleeve. Why would God tell me 31 years, go back to the old way? And, all, and I said, I told y'all, I'll tell you all the time, Jesus, I told Jesus, I don't even know the new way. All he said, just do what I tell you. Now, what is he going to do? I can say I don't know, but technically I do know he's going to turn this world upside. He's going to do it. 
but he needs people that's willing to step out on faith to do it because he personally is not going to come down here and do it again. He's done it. He said, no, I need some, I need helpers. I need servers. I need slaves. I need, I need save. I need somebody to help me do what I want to get done. Amen. Come on. Verse 36. Now there was at Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good work and arm seed, which she did. And it came to pass, is everybody reading? Come on, let's start over. Verse 36. Keep reading. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chain. They didn't clean up, getting ready to put her in the ground. Come on. And as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. In other words, go get Peter. Tell him to hurry up and get down here. Come on, read verse 39. Then Peter arose and went with them when he was come. Weeping and showing which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all for them. He said, all y'all need to get out. All y'all got to go. Put them all out. Put them forth and kneel down and talk to God and turning him. Wait a minute. Talking to God and told God, look. Turning him, not himself. He's telling God, look. These people miss this woman. These people miss this woman. What are you going to do about this? They want her back. But Jesus, I don't know what you want, but they want her back. Now, Jesus, they called me. Now, do I know his exact prayer? No, I do not. But when you tell me he turned God to her, and I mean, he's telling God, he pointed out this woman to God, as if God doesn't see, but God does. But see, that's the kind of faith you got to have in God. So when you go to people to pray, you got to say, Jesus, you sent me out here to be a witness. You sent me out here to help people. You sent me out here to pray for people. You sent me out here to get folks in the church. Why aren't you getting this person in their right mind? Why aren't you helping them? Because you calls me. You put me at COA. You told the pastor to tell me we need to go out and win. So you told me all of this. So why ain't you helping her? Come on, read. What verse was that? 39 from the top. Read. No, verse 40. I want 40. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eye, and when she saw Peter, so he done, he done went and talked to God and said, Lord, but we got to do something about this. See, it ain't all one motion. He's in there praying, talking to God, and letting God know, you have to help me out because you put me in this position. You let me tell this brother two hours, one day, two days ago, whatever it was, to get up. Now, they heard about me using Jesus, raising folks up that couldn't walk. They called me because they believed the God that I serve. Oh, glory, hallelujah. We got to get people to believe the God that we serve. Now, here's the question. Are you serving God because you know what he can do? Or are you serving him to get some money out of it? Are you serving God for yourself? Or are you serving God to do what God have called you to do? Amen. Come on. Verse 41. And he gave her his hand. And lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widow, presented. Thank you, Jesus. We need this kind of faith in us. We need this kind of faith that I am, meaning you, I am going to do what God has called me to do. The book of Acts. God gave us the book of Acts to show us what we can do. He put the books of Acts in the Bible to show they did. What is it that they had that we don't have? Nothing. Whatever they had, we got it. Which is who? Jesus Christ. 
They had to get the faith some way, somehow, at some point, and some time. Amen. They didn't get it by sitting at home, believing one day, one day, one day. They didn't get it because somebody kept telling them. They got the faith in Jesus Christ by going out doing what he called us to do. He said, go ye into all the world. Amen. So why would he tell us to go out into all the world and don't help us do nothing? Remember the sermon I was preaching over there Sunday evening? I was saying we go to church to get information to help us out to do what we want to do. We get the information, but we leave the church and don't apply what we got because we don't think it's going to work. Then why did you go to get something that you had no intentions on using? Why did you go and get something that you had no intentions on using or was not going to believe it? I believe, I know, that's why I've been telling y'all in the fat last year or so, I don't believe God no more. I know God because I know he can do it. Amen. But he can't do it if I don't show up. We can't help nobody if we don't go out and help them, you all. We got to go out and talk to the people. Amen. And you cannot be afraid. You can't be afraid of the people, and you can't be afraid of praying to someone, believing they're going to get up, walk, whatever you asking them to do. And one of the one of the one of the the the, the ingredients of faith is that when you when you pray for someone and they still wondering if they feel better or they hear, tell them, come on, move. See, you don't pray for somebody and they just stay there. No, you gotta get up. Know that he told everybody, get up. Go look at every time they say, get up. Wash your face. Look at yourself. In other words, he said it and told them to respond to what he said they had. He told them to receive what he said I just gave you. So when you pray for someone, minister, you tell them, uh, uh, and, and saints, all of us, when we are witnessing, when you pray for them, say, go on, it's done. No, no it's done. Why are you still doubting? Just because you don't feel it right now? You can't feel it until you believe you have it. A lot, see, we spend too much time waiting to see faith is not seeing. Faith is believing that it's done. When you believe it's done, it is. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, chapter 10. One of the best scriptures, verses, chapters in the whole Bible. Verse 1, say what? There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. A centurion of the band called a morally good man, a devout, morally good. God said this man is morally good. Because the Bible is saying it. That means God is saying it. Amen. God is saying it. All four of y'all separate. The back row, Samaya, Jason, Special, and Cyrus, separate. Come on, all four of y'all up front. Choose a seat up front. Come on, come on, come on. You ways in Bible class time. All y'all got to do is come in and act right, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't single you out. Come on. You can be mad at me, but we'll be all right. You too, Jason. Come on. Up front. Now, if y'all come to the Bible class to laugh and joke, then y'all need to find y'all another meeting place front. Okay? I don't have a problem with y'all having fun, but not while we're having church. Come on, now. I'm going to do this till y'all get mad at me and do right or leave the church. It's going to be y'all choice. It ain't going to be my choice. Amen? Come on. Verse 2, he said what? A devout man, one that... With all his house. The man had a big house. He had slaves. When, when y'all done heard me say this all the time, especially when we had the, the, the uh, open house, that a, when, a, when a master had all kinds of people, everybody was considered part of his family. So that means his house. Now, he's rich. He's not a poor man. Come on. All his whole house. Come on, what else? And gave much arm and prayed. Hallelujah. He helped folks all the time. And he always talked to God. But he was not saved. What am I, I? I'm bringing this to our attention. We got to understand. Don't let nobody back y'all up in the corner because they get to boasting about what they've done. 
they still need baptism in Jesus' name. They still need the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Otherwise, they're going to bust hell wide open. Take them to this verse. That's why I need you to understand devout mean morally good. When God, the Bible used the word devout, that means they was morally good. Look at the good things that this man did. God said, keep in mind, God said he gave to the people. God said he talked to me all the way. God said he had a big house. God said it. God said, but he ain't saved. He's doing good, but he's not saved. Come on, verse 3 said what? He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayer and thy arm are come up for a memorial. Memorial me, I've been hearing all your prayers for 20, 30, 40 years. I heard everything you said to me. Now I'm going to answer your prayer. How many people, listen, hallelujah, God heard my prayers after 28 years. When did you get saved? That's when God answered your prayer. Are y'all with me? So now he's sending, just like he sent somebody to me and somebody to you all, now he's sending up to somebody else because he's ready to answer somebody else's prayers. So if he got 50 of us in here, and he said, that means he's ready to answer at least 50 people prayers. A minimum of 50. God is ready to answer the people prayers. They've been praying. I wasn't even morally good. <laughs> and he answered my prayer. Amen. 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 So how many out there that's not morally good, that are morally good, and God is about to answer their prayer? Peter the apostle, the disciple, and all of them that came along at that time was doing the same thing that we are doing. We are being instructed, we are preparing, we are being told what we need to do to go out to witness to people. They did the same thing that we are doing here, you all. So now God is saying, John, y'all are going to people that have been doing very good, but here's the problem. They are not saved, and y'all got to remember that. I don't care how good they act, they are not saved. Are y'all with me? Amen. Understand? They are not saved. Come on, hallelujah. And verse 5, he said what? Your prayer come up for memorial. That meaning I'm remembering all the conversations you've had with me. Ain't that wonderful? Isn't it wonderful that God remembered all the conversations we had with him before we got saved? That's why it's so wonderful being saved. I don't care what people say. When a person comes to get saved, somewhere down the line, they have asked God about being saved and doing it right. And they did it from their heart. And God said, okay, time to get your prayer answered. It's time to get your prayer. But he got to send the right person to the right person. You understand? Misha, I can't talk to everybody you can talk to. I can't do it. Remember, we, I showed you about Philip. Philip wasn't helping nobody get the Holy Ghost, was he? But he was getting folks baptized. He got them baptized. Go get Peter. Peter going to tell him how to get saved. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful that God is using us. See, and I think when we start getting excited and feeling that the fact that God is using us, I think we might start to get the thing straight. God is using you. God done pulled you out the dump and want you to go pull somebody else out the dump. It's nothing like helping somebody after you've been helped by Jesus Christ. Come on, verse 4, he said what? Or 5. He said what? And now, send it. Send to what? Where is Peter at? He's in Joppa. Remember, he just got Lydia up, right? Dorcas, he just raised up. He's in Joppa. Come on. Send to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is, he lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee, he shall tell thee, I, 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 I got a lot of testimonies about a lot of y'all, 
about what God told me to say to you and, and how to get you in here and how to say it and where to go get you from and what's the right phrase to say to you. And he, he, done, he done told me the right phrase to say to another person. He said, just hold off. He said, all you got to do is just say what I tell you. When I tell you to say it, she'll come to church. He said, just do what I tell you, she'll be here. He got, what he does, he programs sinners to what he wants them to hear to get them to get converted. Yeah. We don't know until he tell us. So when we do what he tell us, we got evidence that it can work. See, when you look at somebody like me, and when I know, when I know what God say to me and how he says it to me, I know what it takes, because I know I'm saying exactly what he said, and it's going to work. But it won't work, that statement won't work with everybody. It'll work with this one because he's already programmed them for that statement coming out of your mouth. Look how he's programmed, he, he's telling Cornelius to go get Peter, and he's finna program Peter. He finna, uh, uh, Peter been programmed not to hang out with Gentiles. Don't go near him. God is about to up, up, upload a new program on him. In other words, time to get rid of this version, time to give you an updated version of loving people, Peter. But Peter don't know that, and nor does Cornelius know. All Cornelius know, go get him. He's with a Simon by the a name, a Tanner. Simon in a Tanner that owns a house that's a, that is a Tanner, and he stayed by the seaside. Ain't that something? Hallelujah. Come on, read. Um, what verse we at? Seven. He said, well, and when the angel which spake unto Nehemiah was departed, he called two of his household servants and devout soldiers of them that waited on him. He, he called two of his best guys. It's good when you know you got somebody that's going to obey you exact. That's why I tell y'all, say exactly what I say. He told him exactly where to go according to what he had been told. Now you get somebody and tell them to do one thing and they go do it. Well, boss, I didn't see him. Did you go where I told you? Well, you said by the seaside. Listen, don't you worry. Go where I told you to go. Don't, don't you invent a new route. Do it my way. Come on. The soldier that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all of these things unto them, when he told them what he, he when he told them, what the angel said, they hit the road. They hit the road. Come on, read. Verse 9. <coughs> on the morrow, as they went on their journey, they drew nigh unto the city. Peter went up unto the housetop to pray. They almost, they, they, they close to the city. They almost there. Peter get hungry. But he said, I'm going to go up here and pray while they cooking the food. He don't know. God finna deprogram you, buddy. Finna upload a new program. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, verse 10. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready. You ever fell asleep while you're waiting on the food to get cooked? Anybody? <laughs> waiting, you waiting to grow up. And God knocked him out and said, no, I got something to show you, boy. Come on, verse 11. And saw heaven open. And a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corner and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise. A voice. He looking at a great sheet, all kinds of stuff that he does not eat. I don't eat that stuff. I've been programmed not to eat that stuff. I ain't eating it. The boy told him, Peter, kill it and eat it. Can you imagine? You see bugs and spiders and all kinds of stuff crawling around, moving, staying on the sheet, and somebody tell you to eat it. I ain't eating that. Who are you talking to? I never ate no, no bugs. I ever ate a, ch a chocolate-coated beetle bug? Very good. Very good. I'm going to bring y'all some one day. Y'all say, rise, see your age. Slay and eat. Huh? Y'all going to run out of here. 
Y'all gonna really say I'm Jim Jones. Nah, come on. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Come on, verse 14. But Peter said, not so. Wait a minute. Not so. Not so. He telling Jesus no. How many of y'all done told Jesus no? When you know you're talking to Jesus. You ain't confused who you're talking about. You ain't confused who you're talking about. Uh-uh, Lord, I ain't doing that. How many times Jesus done told y'all to go apologize? I ain't, Lord, I ain't doing that. Telling Jesus no. You telling Jesus, and you know you're talking to Jesus. Because you didn't say John, you didn't say, you said Lord. How many times you've done that? How many times you missed out on getting folks saved because you so mad at them and God telling you to go make peace? You know, I ain't doing that. I'm tired of them, Lord, messing with me. That person ended up going to hell because you didn't do your job. Supposing God will kill you now because you didn't do your job. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Verse 14. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never. And I ain't gonna. I've always obeyed your law. And you're breaking the most controlling law that is. Obey. But you're claiming how good you are. You just broke the cardinal rule, disobedience. I always do right. You need to go apologize. I know, Lord, I always do right. Well, no, you don't. You just broke your record because you just said you ain't doing this one. I want us to understand. You can't say no to Jesus. You can't say no. Come on. Read. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What verse we at? 15? And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God have cleansed? If I told you to go witness to him, you go. They clean. They waiting on you. They waiting on your word that can only come out of your mouth because I programmed them for your words. I programmed them for your voice. I've programmed them that only you can say the right thing to get them to show up for church. I've programmed them for you. And you saying you can't do it because you don't want to do it when I've set it up just for your voice? I've set them up for your voice. And you can't go do it. Hallelujah. Come on. Verse 15, he said what? And the voice spake unto him again a second time. What God have cleansed, thou, that call not thou common. Verse 16, this was done. And the vessel was received up again three times. Three times. It's a lot of significance to three times. I'm going to preach it one day to y'all. It's a lot of things happen in the Bible three times. Come on, read. Verse 17 Say what? Now, while Peter doubted in himself what the vision which he had seen with me, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. In other words, they asked around town where his house was, now they're standing at the gate. Because they don't really know. It's a lot of houses along the seaside, but they're looking for one particular house. Come on, read. And called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. Now, watch this. These are Gentiles looking for a Jew. So you know, by law, they are hesitant to let them in. Right? Are y'all with me? God got the people programmed too. Everybody's programmed. But they don't know it. Because they don't hang out with Gentiles. So when a Gentile knocked at a, a, a Simon gate, which means the man had to be kind of wealthy to have to go through a gate to get to his house. So you got slaves of the Gentile sort knocking at a rich Jew house. Are y'all with me? Uh, uh, classmates, y'all see all of this type of information you need the, the class we started Tuesday night, Manners and Customs in the Bible. See, and I've been showing them. See, people just read, but they don't really look at the significance behind this whole scenario that's going on here. 
They don't have no dealing with no Gentile. Now, them, them slaves might have been dressed pretty neat because they stayed with a good master, but they still was recognizable slaves because slaves had a certain outfit they wore regardless, and they were Gentile knocking on a rich Jew door. What am I saying all that for? If God tell you to walk up to a rich man, how? Knock on the door. He prepared everybody for your arrival. Don't you? I ain't going up there. They too rich. They ain't want to be bothered. Fear. If God tell you to go knock on that gate, you go knock on that gate. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. What, what verse we at? What verse is it? 19. He's reading it. So what? While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold what? Three men looking for you. Wait a minute, I'm up here. I just got through praying. I was hungry. I fell asleep. Now you tell me somebody down there looking for me? Come on. Read. He said, well, arise therefore and get thee down and go with them. Don't you ask no question. You just go. Here's Peter up in a rich Jew house. Some slave of the Gentiles knocking at the door come down there and Peter said, I got to go. God just told me to go. He really don't know really what's going on yet. He's just being obedient. Amen? I, I, I think one of the most amazing things uh, uh, in relationship when God did, I always think about Nina. When, when uh, uh, I was working at the group home and and I was, my office was way in the back, you know, behind the house. It was another house behind the house. That was my office. And I rarely ever go up front during the day because I don't want to have to deal with them wild kids, you know. And I don't even remember why I went up there, but I went up there for some reason. And I saw her, and the Holy Ghost said, hire her no matter what. And I didn't think twice about it. And I went back was Shannon, because Shannon was going to interview her, and I said, Shannon, there's a girl out there coming for an interview. I said, no matter what she tells you, hire her. I said, just go through the routine, but I want you to know, because if I had the power to hire whoever I want. I said, whatever you do, you just hire her. Don't, don't worry about it. She's going, huh? I said, just do what I told you to do. You know? And I ain't thought no more about it after that. It was just automatic reaction. You know? And I don't know how long it went after that. Nina come in, you know, you know, uh, think she all sexy and cute young girl talking about she saved all the, I never said a word. One day I'm sitting at my desk and she told me, I said, well, really, Nina, you really ain't saved. Mm. What do you mean? I said, you ain't baptized in Jesus' name. You ain't got no Holy Ghost. You ain't spoken no tongue. I said, so you're really not saved. I said, but that's all right. Don't worry about it. Nina showed up for church that Sunday. She's been mm. coming ever since. Amen. How many of y'all would have got saved on a statement like that? Mm. Y'all would have been ready to fight with you. But God had already prepped her. Uh, yeah. Remember, he told me to hire her no matter what. God, and all, he, God was already doing what he needed to do to, to mold her and get her ready. Amen? And then, look, look who she brought with him. With her brother. <laughs> Amen? But I, 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 done, I done preached to her mom, some of her friends, her grandparents. Listen, they all done heard... God got, God, I did the same thing with Tony. A little different, but pretty much the same concept. She was talking, and I just told Tony, you really ain't saved. But what are you preaching? I said, come on to my church. Came to my church, and the rest is history. Listen, what am I telling y'all? God set folks up for you, but you got to do what he tells you to do. You can't be afraid. If he tell you to open your mouth and say something, you do and say what he tell you to do and say just say it. So if you have to knock on a rich man's door or witness to a rich man that you're working around, you tell him. If, if God tell you to tell him, tell him they ain't saved. Tell him you ain't saved. Just say what he tell you to say. Remember, he's already programmed them. Come on. Read. Uh, what verse we at? 21. He said what? Then Peter went down to the, to the men which was sent to him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What you, what, what you come here for? I'm, I'm the man you're looking for. What's up? Come on, verse 22. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one that feareth God 
and of good report among all the nations of the Jews was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into this house and to hear. Cornelius don't even know what this man is going to say. All he know is God says send and get him and bring him down here. They rehearsed what Cornelius told them, what the angel said. Amen. Come on. Uh, verse 22, 23, he said what? Then called he them in. Wait a minute. They ain't even got in the house yet. They still at the gate. See what I'm saying? They still at the gate. They ain't got in this rich man's house. Peter is about to bring some, some Gentiles in a rich Jew house. Come on. Everybody's heart is prepared. Everybody's prepared. Come on, read. Verse 23 say what? Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them. And certain brethren from the Joppa brought some Jews up in another man's house. I mean, Gentiles up in another man's house. And they get up the next morning. Now, see, that was a no-no. Gentiles don't stay with Jews. You, you don't do that. Not, uh, uh that don't happen. Come on. Verse 24 say what? And on the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, watch this, I love this part here, and had called together his kinsmen. That brother got a house full of folks. He not only called together his kinsmen, he even got his friends. He done called folks from everywhere because God done told him there's a man coming and he's going to tell you what you need to do. Remember, Cornelius don't know what he's being told. All he know, his prayers will come up for memorial. Listen, people come to church. People wait to hear our voices. All they know is they've been saying, God, I need help. Jesus, help me. Lord, I need help. Lord, God. You and I have said and still say the same thing. You come to church saying, Lord, I need help. Lord, help me. Y'all are praying, Lord, help me to be a better witness. Help me to understand. Help me to hear. Help me to say the right name. Are you ready? Are you really ready for it? Are you really ready to do what you're asking God? Don't come to church. I mean, don't pray and come to church and hear the answer to your prayer and go back out and afraid to do it. Because, listen, we are going to do a lot of witnessing, but you witness on your job. Like I've been telling y'all, y'all don't be afraid to speak to people with praise the Lord. You just put a label on yourself. Y'all afraid to label yourself. But y'all will label yourself as a Nike lover, as a, as a, as a, uh, uh, what's some of them names? Gap. <laughs> Come on, name some of these folks y'all clothes you wear. Jordan. Oh, y'all are really, oh, y'all crazy about Jordan. Y'all are just straight up Jordan freaks. Come on. Everything Jordan, 503 and $400 for a pair of shoes. You out of your ever-loving mind. And I can get a knife and cut that shoe like a $20 pair of shoes. If I'm going to spend that much on some, I, a knife better not cut it. If I go out and buy a rose, you better be able to kick it and break your ankle. That's the way I look at it. You can kick a rose and bend it like a pinto. And my thing is, you might well bought a pinto. Just because it's got a computer in it. That's my mentality of thinking. <coughs> Amen. What am I saying? Stop being afraid. Label yourself. I'm labeled as a Jesus, Jesus only. I'm labeled as a, 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 a preacher that uh, against women pastor. I'm labeled. Yep. Too bad I can't tattoo it on my forehead. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm labeled as a hard preacher. I'm, a la I'm, I'm labeled as sending women to hell for pain and men to hell for earring. I'm labeled, and I won't take off the label. I'm trying to make the label bigger. Because I don't want nobody to be confused of who I am. So when I walk up and say something to you, you know who's talking, and you ain't confused about who's doing the speaking. I don't care about how people. I'm labeled as a Jesus Christ baptized, Holy Ghost, tongue-talking saint. Amen. Yes, I say praise the Lord. You don't like it? Don't, don't respond. I don't care. Still praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, what verse we at? 
25. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet. Look at that. Look at that. Why did he fall at his feet? Because he knew God told him, go get that man. He don't know. Remember, he don't know who Peter is. He don't know what's going on with Peter. All I know, supposing, supposing you go to work tomorrow and God done prepared somebody just for your voice. You walk in the break room and you say, praise the Lord, Cindy, how you doing today? And God done told this woman, you gonna walk in there tomorrow and say, praise the Lord, and she's going to tell you or he's going to tell you what you need to do. Now, but God done told you already tonight, huh? So you walking in tomorrow and you say that and you see a reaction on Sandy's face and you freeze. Because you're scared. Are you supposed to talk about the Bible at work? You're afraid. What you're afraid of? God done set this up. This is a setup. The fact that you saved is a setup. Don't y'all know from the day you were born, it was a setup. From the foundation of the world, it was a setup. When God decided to make man, it was a setup. He knew when he was making man, because he knew the devil was already on the head. When he made Satan, it was a setup. Everything that's happening is a setup. Oh, thank you. I'm glad he's using me to set things up in the right order. Come on, hallelujah, verse 28. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is not lawful, I mean that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation, but God that have shown me, he said, uh, Cornelius, and all of his friends and relatives. He said, y'all know I ain't got no business being here. This is, this don't, we don't do this. We don't hang out together. We don't talk to y'all, and y'all don't talk to us. Did y'all read that? This is Peter telling them, we don't, we don't do this. Jews don't hang out with Gentiles. We don't even keep company with one another. Oh, hallelujah. But has shown me that I should not call a man common so that take all of these black preachers that preach in segregation. God just cleared all that up. That's why I tell y'all, it ain't no black and white. It's sinners and saints. Well, ungodly too. Because God made three, I get three. But it ain't no black and white. It ain't no Puerto Ricans and Jews. It ain't no Catholics and Protestants. It's sinners, saints, or unholy, un ungodly. That's it. Got nothing to do with your color. You can't judge a person because they, they got a different color or they missing one arm or, or they not as handsome as pretty or fine or sexy or fat or skinny that you want. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Amen. Come on, very, hallelujah. Why am I saying that? Because I don't want y'all not talking to people because of their race, creed, or color. Y'all stop. Y'all stop saying I can't talk to them because they white and they ain't going to understand. Who told you that? Where you get that from? Or they Mexican, or they Hispanic, or they Jewish. I remember when I did the freedom funeral for Sabrina. Y'all remember who was in that church that day? I, I put it like this. It was every nationality under the sun was up in that church. And I looked at him and I said, Lord, what am I going to say to these people? I said, I don't know what to preach. You know, and I, I was sitting there. Now, I, I started saying this when everybody was coming in. Because I go, okay, I'm the officiant, I'm the preacher, I got to run the service. I've done funerals and things, but nothing on that magnitude. And I said, what am, I'm looking. Bishop Pettit, that church was packed. They had to turn folk, well, they didn't turn them away. Some folks just decided not to come in because there was no more room. The place was literally packed. And I was sitting there, and... um. And I, I, had, I had been praying, obviously, the whole time. And I, uh, Elder, um, I can't think of his name. Huh? King. Elder King, I'm sitting there. Elder King don't know I'm praying. He probably think I am. But I ain't saying nothing out loud. Elder King said, Elder Portis, 
He said, you have to preach to all these people. And I looked at him and I said, I know that man. I said, what am I going to say? He said, don't worry, God will give it to you. Mm -hmm. Y'all know me, I walked up with no Bible, no notes and nothing. And I, and I, and I preached because I told him, I don't, ain't no need to me opening up a Bible because y'all don't, don't even have one. Some of y'all ain't never read a Bible in your life. But I went on and I preached and I felt good after it was over and God said, John, you spoke to a lot of people today. He said, and they, I like this one, God. He said, they all heard you. They all heard you. I don't care what nobody say. They can't walk out there and say, I didn't make salvation available and visible to them enough to go to the next step. Now, how many go to the next step? That's, that, that's up to God. I have nothing to do with that. I did what I was supposed to do. Listen. Don't you worry about what people are going to do after you talk to them because just because that happened so good with Nina and Tony, it ain't happened to everybody like that that I've talked to. They, some of them gone off the deep end. They just gone. My wife come bring me a bunch of books that her mama gave her, that, that somebody gave her. I said, I don't want these books. The first, when I look down, the first book I see, The Origin of Satan. Seriously? Seriously, who would write and read a stupid book like that? You want to know the origin of Satan? This is it. He was in heaven. He running the praise team, got up in it, and got kicked out. What else you want to know? What else you want to know? God, somebody said, well, he was good. Watch this. I can show you a scripture. God said, if you be good, until the day you die and you die, you be evil. I don't remember no good you ever did. So why should I remember anything good Satan did? God said he ain't gonna remember no good I did. It's over in Ezekiel. He said, but man do good and do wrong in his last day. Do you think I ought to bring him to heaven? He said, nay, I won't. I don't even remember the good they did. He said, but if a man do evil and do good in his last day, I bring him to heaven and I don't remember the evil he did. So why am I worried about where Satan come from? I know where he come from. Folks, listen, don't y'all read demonic books. Y'all stay away from that stuff. It'll jack you up. You trying to understand evil? You want to understand evil? You ever want to understand evil? I take you on a, uh, what they call it when they take the kids on a field trip. I take, just call me up, I'll take you on a field trip. I'll show you what evil is. If you don't want me to, if you don't want me to, if you want me to escort you on a field trip, take a ride downtown on Skid Row. You want to see what evil. Wait a minute. No, don't you take a ride. Spend the night. Spend the night down there. Sleep in your car. Don't get no hotel. I guarantee you, you'll never need nobody to tell you what evil is. <laughs> you, you'll never want to know what evil is again in your life. That's the heart of evil. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Y'all can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. Come on. What verse we at? 29. He said what? Therefore, we doing good. Therefore came I unto thee without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, I love this. Watch this. He said what? Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy arm are had in remembrance. God said, I remember every good thing you've done. Ooh, glory. Isn't that wonderful? You know what? For us to be saved, God remembers some good things we did. I don't know any that I did, but that's okay. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad he remembered. Amen. Come on. Uh, uh, what verse we at? 32. He says, send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner. By the seaside, who, when he cometh, he shall. And immediately, therefore, I sent thee. 
to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore, are we all here, present before God? Wait a minute. Listen to what he said. We are here, present before Peter. Waiting to hear what Peter got to say. Right? That ain't what he said. He said God. People ain't waiting to hear you. They waiting to hear God. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all got to listen to me. Read. Y'all got to pay attention to what's being. He ain't say, they ain't waiting to hear Peter. They know Peter is just a servant. God says, send and get Peter. He going to tell you. He said, so now we're sitting here. We are all, listen. Hear all things that are commanded thee of Peter. We believe when you open your mouth, it's God talking. Y'all came to church tonight to hear from Jesus Christ. You got to believe that when I talk, that is Jesus. Especially since you know what you see and what you read and what you hear is coming out of the word of God. You got to be confident that when you read the word of God that is talking to you, if you don't get that confidence, I can't give it to you. You got to believe that going back to the old way, you got to believe that speaking in tongues, you got to believe that you got the power to heal and raise and pray and comfort and, 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 and soothe and help. You got to believe that you can do that because I can't convince you. I'm convinced I can do it. I'm convinced you can do it, but you have to convince yourself that you can do it. Amen? So Cornelius is convinced. Isn't he? He convinced. Hey, whatever you say, man, God talking. I, I, God told me to send for you. I don't even know what you're going to tell me. Come on, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth. God is not a respecter of person. Come on. But in every nation, he that feareth him and work its righteousness is accepted. Peter said, I'm convinced if you live right, God will help you. Come on, read. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Come on. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism with John preached. How God anointed of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree him God raised up the third day and showed himself openly not all the people but unto witnesses chosen before of God even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that is he which were ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead to give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sin while Peter yet spake these words the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard Peter, according to church folks, he ain't really preached no sermon, has he? Look at it. The only reason that makes sense to us is because we got the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, that wouldn't make sense to us, would it? Watch this. Those were all Gentile, and they didn't know nothing about the word of God. They didn't know nothing about Jesus Christ. They didn't know nothing about uh, 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 Jesus being hanged on a tree. They didn't know nothing about that. So it sounded kind of like a bunch of gibberish. Would y'all agree? The only reason you know this now, because you, you say you've been coming to church. Can you imagine hearing this for your very first time? Would that make any sense to you? First of all, our question is, what is the Holy Ghost? Well, I ain't never heard, what is the Holy Ghost? I ain't never heard of no Holy Ghost. What you mean he was crucified? What, what, what you mean that, uh, 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 what was another one they, they said here? 
What you mean anointed? I don't know nothing about no anointed. What you mean anointed? Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost, he had power. He could heal folk. He was healing folk. See, this is what we would say. But you know why they wasn't thinking like that, y'all? Because God prepared them. Oh, hallelujah. I hope y'all keep up with God prepared them. It wasn't so much of them understanding because they didn't. Their hearts were prepared for the presence of God. What am I saying? It ain't so much what we say to sinners is we say what God tell us to say to sinners. Because see, the problem with us, we, we want to make sure that we are so ecclesiastical, hermeneutical, correct in every word we say, and we got to say a whole lot of information, say what God tell you to say. They, listen, Peter ain't saying nothing about people being, the only thing they might have understood is being oppressed by the devil. Healing? What you mean healing? God can heal? Y'all come to church and want to understand everything. Listen, God is preparing folks out there just to hear our voice and to show up. Oh, glory, hallelujah. If we just show up believing God and saying what he tell us to say, folks will get saved. But we're too busy trying to get it intellectually in our head. That's why you can't get nowhere. You don't have to understand. I didn't try to understand why God told me to hire Nina. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't try to figure it out. All I know, hire her. I'm through with the conversation. I don't know what date he gonna have me witness to her. Didn't even know the date was coming. I just obeyed. I had to make Botox get up and come down here and let me in this building. And then when we get down here, he didn't even have no key. He said, I ain't got no key. You got to break in it. That means he didn't know what it looked like on the inside. I had to go down there. I went down there two or three times because every time I drove by, I go, I, I, I didn't go. The Holy Ghost said, take that building. I'm going, man, I don't know what it looked like. And every time I pass by, take that building. So I go down there, Mr. Botox. You know, when can we go? How are we going? How are we going? He sat there and never get around to it. And got up one morning, God said, go make him come down there. I walked in the door. Mr. Oh, uh, Mr. John. I said, no, get up. We're going to look at the building. Get up right. I said, get up. Get up. Right now we're going. He said, okay. <laughs> got up. Came down here. We stood in the front of this building. And he looked at it. He said, you want to rent this? I said, yeah, you got the key. He said, I ain't got no key. You got to break in. I said, what it look like? He said, I don't know. He said, you want to rent it? I go, yeah. He walked up to me and he patted me on the face. He said, John, I love you. He said, don't tear up my building. He hugged me, shook, his, shook my hand, walked away. He ain't never walked in here. Not one time. Y'all remember one time he came out there, they was cleaning up. He sat out there and I told him, come in and look. He, nope. he said, can you give me some water? Remember my wife, I think it was you, Angelo, somebody went out there. He was telling my wife, you married to this, you know, guy like, he said, you can leave him and come with me. But that, he, he, he ain't never came in this building. <laughs> That's my buddy, Mr. Botox. Y'all leave him alone. Amen. But what am I saying? I had to yell at a man that I didn't know that's rich. And I'm talking about rich. He got a book this thick with property that he owned. God told him, tell him. And I didn't know I was going to have to yell at him. I just told him. And he just said, okay, just as calm, okay. Called his driver, and, I, and they followed me here. And the rest is history. What am I saying, y'all? Do what God tell you to do the way he tell you to do it. See, I got all kinds of, I'm just, I can only tell you the one that's coming to my mind, but I got all type of things when I just did it the way God told me. Listen, hallelujah, I don't know who God got prepared for y'all. But understand this, their heart were prepared for that message that made no sense to Gentile, unsaved, that they never heard the message of Jesus Christ. But how in the world all of them just, and the Holy Ghost did what? Come on. And why, what is that? 
while Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell on all all them that heard the word. Because they believed their master, their cousin, their friend, Cornelius, and they were there ready to listen. Come on. And verse 45 said what? And the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, all of them Jews that came to be nosy was amazed. I like to use the word flabbergasted. They just couldn't believe God then gave the Gentiles his spirit. Well, I'll be doggone. They just couldn't believe it. But how could they doubt what they saw? Come on. Was astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also would pour out their gift. So you got folks saying you ain't got to speak in tongues? Huh. Take them to this. Take them to this. If they don't like the first one, when the Jews got it, show them how the Gentiles got it. And notice, notice the sermon they heard. Come on, God, you, come on, come on, you got to come. He ain't say nothing like that. He just told them basically who Jesus was, which they didn't know, and the Holy Ghost. What am I saying? It ain't about you and me and what we do. It's what we say. The Holy Ghost will just come because he's already prepared them. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 46 said what? And for they heard them speak with tongues and... They heard them speak with tongues and what? Magnify God. Come on, read. Verse 46. I'm sorry, 47. Now this is, listen y'all, this is, in my opinion, the most powerful scripture in the entire Bible. Let me make sure if this is the one. Yeah. I don't think there's a scripture more powerful than this one. To sum up all people's confusion about getting the Holy Ghost. If anybody confused about how to get the Holy Ghost, this clarifies it. This straightens everything out right here. But people don't want to hear it. You can't get more specific than this. Come on, read. Can any man forbid water that these should be baptized? Everybody, I don't care what kind of religion they're in, believe Peter and them got the Holy Ghost by speaking in tongues. Everybody. Peter said out of his own mouth that they got the Holy Ghost just the way I got it. So why would anybody say there's another way? Why would anybody say I can be saved another way? Peter said got the Holy Ghost as well as we. Peter validated that they spoke in tongues along with them other Jews, just like everybody did on the day of Pentecost. So why can you get, how can anyone come along and say, we don't all have to speak in tongues? Peter validated it on the day of Pentecost, then he validated it with, this, with, with Cornelius now. Why and how can someone come up with another validation to do it another way? That's why you got to stand on what you know and what you believe, but you got to know it and you got to believe it. Otherwise, that's why you struggle standing. That's why you're afraid. Show me anywhere else in the Bible somebody proved another way somebody got the Holy Ghost. Paul never said they got it another way. Nobody said. So how do y'all come up with another way of getting it when Peter only said the same thing happened twice? Verse 48 says what? And he commanded in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. What's the name of the Lord? How can somebody come up with something different, y'all? How can y'all not stand on this? There's nothing else to stand. This is it. Then pray 
they him to tarry now. Certain day we have no idea. But now, you know what they was asking Peter to do? Stay and explain to us what just happened. Tell us all about this Holy Ghost. Tell us about speaking in tongues. Tell us what, 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 what are we supposed to do now? Oh, we feel good. We feel good. What, what? We've been serving God however they have been serving. Now all of a sudden they're speaking in tongues. Y'all done seen when three or four people speak in tongues. Y'all see what we do, right? Let's say it was 1,500. Let's say it was even 75, folks. 75 folks get the Holy Ghost at one time. You can bet you the presence of God was so thick. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all, some of y'all was here when we had like three or four people got the Holy Ghost almost bam, 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 bam. We almost tore this little church up. <laughs> we were all so tired. And remember, that, remember that day, uh, uh, your daughter, uh, Kennedy, she danced from over there, over here, back around and back over there. What about three or four people got the Holy Ghost? Listen. Can you imagine 75 people getting the Holy Ghost? Oh, glory. Say, yeah. So y'all guess y'all can't imagine it. I can imagine 200. Because I'm going to shout. That'll be one day y'all will see me do a Jay Porter's dance. <laughs> and I don't know what it is, but y'all will see one that day. Come on, that's enough. We're going to start at chapter 11 then. Come on, let's give the Lord a fan praise. Hallelujah. We got to believe this. Stop being afraid. Amen. All right. One announcement. Um. It's official. It's official as of today that I am a suffragan bishop. So, and I will be, and I will be consecrated in in uh, Palmdale in July. All right. So, y'all like that? You heard that in there? So, I'll be. A, I'm a suffragan bishop. Y'all have to call me suffragan bishop designee until it's, I'm consecrated. I know y'all ain't going to say all that, but so just for the saying, record, so he, been, he been calling me bishop yeah, forever. forever. I don't even know if he ever called me anything else. He's been doing this so long. Um, That's why you got this desk. I had, I, <laughs> the desk. The dead didn't happen to show up the day that it was official. Amen. So it is official that I'll be, I'll be. That means y'all are going to stop letting me. Now I can, I can let my hands get soft now. I can, I can get bishop hands now. Okay, so, um, so I just wanted to let y'all know that. All right. Amen. So let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. That means all of y'all better be in Palmdale that Friday night. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> they clapping for me. Wait a I ain't clapping for that one now. Not going to Palmdale. So it is that Friday night. Amen. All right. Amen. So. <laughs> Please don't y'all abuse it. <laughs> it's going to take. It's going to take me a while to get used to it, so. Amen. Huh? All right, offering time. Come on, give me your offering. Come on, uh, Minister Quarles. You can dismiss us in prayer. What oh, thank you. That's right. Pastor Greer is, has asked us to do a lot of work for her during the funeral. So Friday and Saturday, we're gonna be working the funeral. Uh, we need 
greeters, talk to Sabrina. We need people to serve the food on Saturday, so talk to Twyla. And hospitality, talk to Twyla. And, yeah, and healthcare professional, talk to Twyla. Amen. So we're going to be there serving. We're going to be there. Uh, I don't know who's available on Friday. My wife and Angela is going to be over there decorating the table. So if y'all want to, somebody can go over there, talk with my wife, and see what time she's going to be there to decorate the table because they're delivering the tables tomorrow. Um, the brothers, we're going to go by there again tomorrow night just to see what else we may need to do in preparation for Friday. Because Friday they're having a memorial service, but it's going to be a church service. So basically, I need COA there. Just come prepared to work, and if we need you, we can put you to do something. Amen. Young people, we can use you all because there's going to be a lot of people that's probably going to eat. So we're going to need people. To, we don't have to do any cooking. They got all of the food coming. We just got to make sure it's, it's served orderly. Amen. And you'll find out the order we're going to do it when you get there. But we need everybody there. Y'all remember she let us use the church when they consecrated me as a district elder. She didn't ask no question. She just said, Elder Portis, my church is available if you need it. And she basically just opened up the doors and walked away and left it. Amen. And not that we're doing it to repay her, but whenever someone show love, it's good to all return love back. Amen. And, and, and people know that when we use their churches, we've always left them churches clean. So, brothers, Friday, when church service is over, we're going to clean it up. And then after Saturday, we're going to clean it up. So I know those are two busy days. And don't forget, Sunday, there's no night service, but we're going to go to Bishop Pettit because I'm preaching for him for his anniversary service on Sunday at 3.30. Amen? Because we only go to the Senior Citizen Center the first three first, second, and third Sunday of the month. So y'all got to keep up with all of this so I don't have to keep repeating. So y'all need to write it down on your calendar or whatever. Amen? Amen. Am I missing anything? Nothing? Where's Sabrina go? Angela, I'm not missing nothing. Time what? Friday, the memorial service starts at 7. The funeral, yeah. So we need to be there, if, get there as fast as you can. Six o'clock is great. If you can make six o'clock, you know our rules, we like to be there early. 15 minutes early is 30 minutes late. Amen? Y'all get that? So I understand you're getting off work. I understand, you know, uh, you want to eat and all of that. Please do, but come, when you get there, be prepared to work. And then also Saturday, what time the funeral starts Saturday? 10. Funeral started at 10, so we need to be there at 8.30 or 9. Oh, and the brothers is working the parking lot both nights, nights too. So we need somebody in the parking lot Friday night and Saturday. So Beverly put together, I think I told the other uh, Whitfield, put together a schedule and y'all make it work. Amen? Now, uh, unfortunately, because as, as a district elder, I have to uh, be in the funeral. Um, Right, several convictions. Uh, I have to be in the funeral, uh, at the funeral, in the funeral, whatever. Okay? All right? But, you know, if you have any questions or something, please call me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is my mic up? Yeah. We still going to have a bonfire, so we can all go out after Bishop, we leave Bishop Pettit, go home, put on yourself some comfort, and let's just come sit out there at the beach. Eat some hot dogs. We'll get a bunch of hot dogs and frisbees and football and let's just have some fun. Can we do that? Don't come out there in no two piece. <laughs> yeah. Youth, whatever y'all got for us to wear on Sunday, we wear Sunday. We'll go to Bishop Pettit, like that. Amen. Uh, and I, no. So they, our, we ain't counseling youth day just because we got to go preach for somebody. Okay, so youth, we uh, they're going to wear jean and they want to wear black, black and or red, anything black or red tops or whatever. Jean, black and red. 
slacks, back and black and red. Yeah. Yeah. Your red suit. Yeah, that's right. Hey, I'm a bishop now. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got all the offering. Let's let's uh put our hands together for the life of the saints. This is the life of saints. We love it. We love it. We love it. Um, this message has just been so wonderful. Um, back in February, I was at work, and the pastor had told us that last week of that fast, the last two days, he said, pray that the Lord, you can hear the Lord voice clear. So I did that. Like, I really did. And I was like, Lord, help me to hear you. I just want to hear you, hear you. So I was sitting at my desk, and everybody was gone that day from work, um, except for this one attorney was in her office. And I kept hearing her on the phone, calling her husband's name over and over and over and over. She's like begging. And I'm like, Lord, what they going through? So I started praying for him because I was like, wow, you know, she really like, come on. And then all of a sudden I heard her. She was talking to like the police. And she said that her husband had taken a whole bunch of pills. And she kept saying, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me, trying to talk him out of it. But he'd taken them and hung up on her. And she lives like way in Santa Clarita, so she couldn't get there. So she called the authorities and said, can you guys get there? And I'll meet you there as soon as I can get there. But she called a couple of family members, and I could overhear all this. So I really started praying, and I'm like, Lord, oh, my God. So she left out, and she said bye like a normal, but she was in a hurry. And she, I said bye, and I was like, oh, my God. So I started praying. I was like, what do I do? What do I do? And I heard the Lord say, get your oil and go anoint this picture. And I'm like, for real. And then I'm thinking, I heard pastor in the, the prayer reminded me of, wait a minute, I've been praying to hear you clearly, and that sounded pretty clear. So I was like, let me hear it again. Let me just make sure. So the Lord, like, it was on me heavy, like, do it now. Like, and I'm thinking, this man's life, I don't know what God's going to do. So I jumped up, I got my oil, and I said, well, I'm going to go get this other lady that pray with me all the time. I ran to her desk and she left early. Then I started repenting on the way back to the office. I was like, Lord, I'm sorry. You told me exactly what to do. So I went in there and I anointed the picture and I prayed what the Lord told me to pray. And he just told me to just pray for him and that he gets saved. And um, the lady came back to work and I, was, I wasn't worried because I kind of, I knew that God could do this. He why anoint a picture? And the oil's still on the picture to this day, but <laughs> she don't know it though. And so um she came back and her husband was okay. He was in the hospital for a couple of days and whatever he had to go through, but he was okay. And she has no idea. So we don't know who's around us. The Lord is preparing them and us, because I don't know when she's gonna find this out. You know, or if the Lord ever will lead me to say that to her. But I was just like, you are really setting us up and preparing COA to do your work, to turn the world upside down. So we have to be obedient because that was, you know, if I hadn't have been obedient, I don't know. You know, and it's not worth even finding out. So I'm just grateful and to the Lord that he took over that situation and he did that thing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Will everybody please stand? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all night. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. As we, go, as we go to the throne of grace, hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for not giving us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you've done for us, the preparation that you've given us, Lord. We ask that you prepare those people that you have for us to speak to, Lord. Prepare us to go out and, and not be afraid, Lord. Thank you for letting the fear go. Hallelujah. Thank you for letting us let go of the fear, Lord. Kill those bugs and do whatever we have to do to get Get over it, Lord Jesus. We need to work for you. We want to work.
work for you, Lord. We love doing your will, Lord Jesus. It feels so good when we're in your will and when we're in your way, Lord Jesus, and not doing anything on our own, Lord. Lord, bless the message that came forth tonight, Lord. It was good meat. Good meat, good meat, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the offering, Lord, on tonight for the presence of your kingdom, Lord, and restore the virtue back to our pastor, our bishop, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.